Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Miami. My name is Bob Babbitt, and we're brought to you by Challenge North America City Bikes, Venito, the Challenge Athletes Foundation, Florida Dairy Farmers, and Wahoo, our next guest, 2019 Ironman World Champion, Annie Hogg. How are you, Annie? I'm very good, thank you very much. Your smiling face always makes me feel good. Yeah, we will see if I have a smiling face on Friday as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you just came off of second place here at Challenge Daytona. And being in the aero position for 50 miles in, in, on the same track is a little different than what you're going to face here. Talk a little bit about what the, the challenge of this bike course compared to what you did last time. Yeah, so actually I was preparing for oval as well, but obviously there are a lot of corners and it's very technical as well. So yeah, I hope I can find my ITU I uh, was bike say, skills. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's very tricky and it's completely different to Daytona. So yeah, we will see how it unfolds, but it will be a completely different like race um, dynamics. I yes, think. and wind. There's a lot. I've been checking the every day. It's like 15 to 20 mile an hour wind. It's, it's like Kona. Yeah, it's like Lanzarote, I would say. Yeah, yes, like Lanzarote. Yes, Lanzarote. The win there is... People don't understand how hard that course is in Lanzarote, right? You train out there Yeah, I spend a lot of time in Lanzarote. It's my second like home, so yeah. I but know there's, it's quite there's long. only like one road there too, right? There's not a lot... No, they have a lot of very, very nice roads right now, so they... Literally every road is brand new and it's, wow. it's really great to That's cycle there. But the wind is... The wind is challenging, yeah. But that's why you go there. Exactly. exactly. So this, the race you had with Paula the, at the last race, I know you got a, uh, a penalty, you know, and that changed the whole complexion of the game. When you were coming on a turn, it was four wide, right? And when they told you you had a penalty, were you surprised? Yes, I actually was because I just heard the whistle, but no one told me why, but it must be that I took too long in the overtaking process because, I mean, if I'm in the race, I want to pull out the best race possible and I don't care if I have to overtake one or three people. I want to be the fastest possible and I don't have any device on my bike, so I just went. Yes. And obviously there was a corner coming and you have the longer way. And I mean, they are all professional athletes on the start and everyone is riding damn hard and to overtake a whole bunch of people, you have to really pull down the hammer. So yes, you do. <laughs> it took a bit too long and I try not to get a penalty this time. So I learned my lesson and yeah, hope I will do it better. Oh, but you still, I mean, you came off the bike and you, you ran 105, which is... With the penalty. With the including penalty, including yes. Including the penalty. Yeah. yeah. So uh, th the hard part is that if there's no penalty, then you're a little over a minute back or so off the bike, right? And, or maybe you're in the lead. So oh, definitely not. <laughs> I'm always chasing because the always girls chasing. Yeah. But you would have been you would have been closer coming off the bike, and that makes such a when you can see the person, right? Yeah, it's definitely yeah, different if you can see one and chase someone you actually see. Yes. But I haven't seen Paula in the whole race, so it's a little bit difficult to chase someone you've never seen in the whole race. And that yeah. that's hard in it because there's it's such a the Daytona area is so big, yeah. it's so expansive that it's. Yeah, you, you lose sight of people. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah, and then you lose a bit like um, you don't know how fast you are because you can see so far ahead and you think <laughs> you run so slow because n nothing changed pretty right. much. So, um, right. yeah, a little bit lost in, in, in nowhere. Yeah. Well, and the track is built for things going 190 miles an hour, right? <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. so it's, it's hard to feel like you're going fast yeah, when you're exactly, yeah, running yeah. 10 miles an hour. So when you go home from something like that, obviously you got second and way bigger prize purse than in a lot of races you win. So it's hard to be too upset. But was it one of those things where you felt like that should have been my win? No, definitely not. Because, I mean, there are things you just can't control. And yeah. I think I controlled everything which was in my hands. And uh -huh. I pulled out a very good race. And I was happy with my race no matter the outcome. Well, because you, you can't influence the outcome. And... I think I did a very good race. I had a good performance, and Paula was just stronger than me. She and was great. Um, yeah, so I was very happy with my race and very happy with the prize suit, <laughs> obviously. So, uh, yeah, it's always like, obviously, if you're in a race, you want to win, but it's something you can't control. And we, like I said, I was very happy with my race. I did everything I could possibly do, and then you have to be happy with the outcome. 
So one of the things us media people like to do is we like rivalries, right? When you have a number of people, when you have a couple of athletes who race each other a few different times and one wins and one gets second. And both. So we obviously want the Annie and Paula rivalry. We want to see uh, that you two guys come down to the run again. But there's a lot of other great women here, I aren't there? I say it's not just about us. I mean, no. a bunch of other people go to Right. Well. Yes, so. and there's so many women who were, you know, finishing fifth, sixth, seventh, and the, the gaps between everybody is so, almost like ITU. There's, the gaps are so small, that, so this race is going to be very tight again. Yeah, exactly, and I mean, like I said, the, the course is very different, the uh, distances are very different. Maybe the ITU girls will have a little bit of advantage, and there are a lot of American girls I've never raced against, right. so you never know how to face, you, so she, you, be, she, you should be aware of everyone, and the only thing you can do is try as hard and see how the days unfolds here. Yeah. How did winning the Ironman, I mean, it's not, what's n one nice thing is you get to be a 24-month champion for, <laughs> for Ironman, right? You get an extra year because there was no racing. Uh, how did that change, has it changed things for you? Oh, not personally, but I'm, I'm still the same, I would say. You're still I the mean, same, Annie. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it's a, a, a really, really nice addition to my sports history and uh, I always have great memories, but I would prefer to race again and to prove that I'm a world champion. Right. And yeah, so let's hope and pray that we will meet in, in Hawaii this year again. What is your, what do you think your schedule, if racing happens, what do you plan on doing in 2021? Uh, I definitely wanted to do um, a Roth because it's oh. yeah, my home race and I want to ob obviously do the um, challenge um, championship, championship in August, in, in, yes. in, yeah, in Summerine, hopefully qualify for the Collins Cup. That's a big goal of mine to be a part of Team Europe because I think that would be really special. Yep. And then, of course, Hawaii. Yeah. So Collins Cup is August. Roth is September. <laughs> And Kona is October. Yeah, I think my coach has a really hard, <laughs> tough time <laughs> to figure out how that should work. <laughs> that is going to be a tough triple. That's what's so hard right now because there's really not going to be a lot in May, June, July. Everybody's going to be shoving their events back as far as they can. Yeah. Uh, hoping not to hit in the winter. Yeah, but it's difficult, but, but there are races popping up and you always have to be prepared for a race. So right. I, I, will, I think there will be races in, in June, July, whatever. You just have to be prepared for them and have to be very spontaneous and yes. jump on the train as soon as the race pops up. So, yeah. So we're going to be seeing more of these style races because the plan is for Challenge North America 15 at racetracks over the next few years. Do you like this for, could you see yourself doing a number of these a year? Definitely, yeah, because I think it's a great format. You are very secure and safe, so the safety for everyone is, is pretty good. And yeah, it's like a little enclosure, you know? Right, it's totally safe. You're not yeah. dealing with traffic out yeah, on the roads exactly. or anything and like that. Yeah, it's very yeah, competitor friendly, I think, because you don't go like 80 Case away and no one can like follow you on the media so right I think it's a great format and I'm really looking forward that's the reason why I'm here because I, I really like Daytona and yeah I'm looking forward to, to Miami and hope there are a few other races popping up I love it and you like the fact that okay I'm sure you're, you're thinking this is going to be like Daytona the fact that it is different it makes it sort of fun Exactly, and it's the same for everyone. I, I don't think anyone has raced a course like that, so it will be completely different for everyone. And that's the beauty of racing, you know? You it have to wait until race day and see I how it, it works. I love it. Annie, thanks so much for always taking time. It's, it's always a treat to see you, and congratulations again on being a 24-month Ironman world champion. Nobody's ever done that before, have it for Jan two years. Jan has done that. Uh, Jan, you and Jan, right? That's it. <laughs> Again, Annie Hogg has been our guest. This is Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Miami. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.